everyone. Welcome to the Building Character Podcast. I'm Greyhawk's hairiest elf three years running, Doug. And I'm Zach, the guy who insists on debating the historical relevance of pole arms, despite the fact that nobody asked. And I'm the bard player who brought a guitar to the session, much to everyone else's annoyance, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Jesus, reminds me of that story about the guy who played, like, the guy from uh, from Death Grips, and he just, like, sing. Oh, God, <laughs> no. Scald. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, he sing a verse like every time it goes, it goes, it goes, critical! <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Alright, anyway, dang. Damn, dude, thank you! You got my back! <laughs> oh, boy! I've been hard on death groups these last, like, like, probably three or four months, actually. I don't know why. I got... Oh, that's I think funny. it's because of the needle drop, actually, if you're familiar. Mm-hmm, it kind of got mm-hmm. me hooked. Well, we're not getting any residuals. Don't plug any other shows or podcasts, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We don't want Anthony Fantano riding our coattails or yeah, anything. Yeah, I mean, we're the yeah, we're the real show here, people. Don't don't forget we <sighs> said anything. <laughs> so, what do we got on the docket today, boys? Um, today we're going to follow up with uh, what we did last uh, last episode, where we created uh, what was his name? His name was uh, Vondal Battlehammer. Yes, yep. our dwarven fighter in D anD D Fifth Edition. But today we're going to level him up. A couple of times just to uh illustrate some how how fifth edition leaves some of the choices until a little bit later in the game to kind of give you an opportunity to see what kind of role you want to play before you uh you know after having seen how the party dynamic works so we'll um we'll talk you through the process of what goes goes into a level up and uh what needs to be what needs to be done, what increases, what choices are made for a fighter. And uh, we'll see what we can do um, to make him a bit more fleshed out and more of a solid wall of muscle than he mm-hmm. already is. If you're hoping for yeah. uh, argument over picks, we kind of have mumbled a little bit behind the scenes about uh, <laughs> what we might think is optimal and choices we may have already made. But we'll we'll try to highlight all the choices yeah. you may make so one, one thing i will yeah. say is that a lot like i've played a few D fifth games and i don't think that any of them have started at first level a <laughs> lot of dms like to start at three uh, i think we touched on this a little bit last time but three is like uh when your class really kind of opens up into what it can do um so, depending on what kind of game you're thinking of joining, this might be your situation, anyways. Mm-hmm. I can res- I can respect that, though. I I still I do I think that it's um that it that leaving that choice off for a, at least a couple sessions because you level up, you get your first couple levels relatively fast. But again, it's all a matter of scale. You get it costs fewer, it takes fewer XP to level up than it would have in an in an earlier edition, but. Also, you get fewer XP. Like, all the numbers are just kind of dialed down. It's like what I call the Paper Mario effect. It's just when when everyone has fewer hit points, smaller numbers are more damage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I do kind of like, uh, I I like it when games kind of start out maybe a little bit ahead, maybe a little bit more into, like, the interesting character building elements. Just because I've had a lot of experiences with games where we all start at level one, get two or three sessions in, and then things are kind of like, nah, we're... Yeah, you know, absolutely. I things can, fall I apart. Can really like that mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's yeah, like I played like the first few levels so many goddamn times. Right. I just want to play right. the higher ones. For yeah. Once. <laughs> if we're gonna crash and burn, at least let me be like level five or something first. Yeah. Exactly. Let me go yeah, out in that case, as a though, cool dude. In that case, though, you should probably have a little more, a uh, little more collaborative efforts when building your characters with the rest of the the people who'll be playing, so to make sure that. You don't uh, step too much on each other's toes, and then oh, all the, you know, the basics are covered. And I, I know I've said this before, and I'll probably say it again because my memory is god awful. But um, that's that's one of the things I think that the way that it's set up, uh, that fifth edition is set up, helps do is you you know if you got a first couple of levels to bumble around and you know try to figure out what everyone's good at and whatnot, and then you can uh, make kind of make your decision yeah, once you see true. who's able to do what and who's good at what and who sucks at what. I think so, that uh, that sort of collaborative character building is really good for any game that I can oh, think of, fun. at least. Yeah. Um, it, it really, will, 
Oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, everyone wants to be the hero, though. You got to be careful with that because, like, people. <laughs> maybe it's just because I'm. Maybe I'm just jaded because of uh, the incredibly power gaming assholes that I used <laughs> that my early D D experience was with. But like, everybody wants to be. Everyone wants to be like a minor god or some sort of insanely improbable combination of templates that is immune to things that no like immune to combinations of things that make him like like let's see like a werewolf that ends up like with golem parts that make him immune to I hate it already silver or something yeah it's like <laughs> that makes silver not affect him Get that kind off. of thing like yeah no, i just no, no. i find I think that's maybe because I like more character-driven stories, but I prefer, like, one of my favorite archetypes is just, I probably have complained about this before, too, but just, like, a, a regular old guy, you know? He's, like, he doesn't have any special powers, but he's got a spear and a shield, and he really knows how to use it, and he just maybe gets his ass kicked all the time, but he's tough as nails and can swing with, like, you know, crazy golem werewolves and sorcerers and stuff. <laughs> that, just, that just appeals to me a lot more, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, and if everybody gets in a trap of, like, optimizing, and I say that with air quotes, their characters <laughs> to have, like, the biggest damage numbers and most attacks per round, um, you kind of end up with an imbalanced with party where you might be able to, like, burst damage everything, but, like, if nobody took, you know, some of the slightly less optimal but more supportive choices... um you can still end up getting stomped on by like later encounters or things that are just large enough or maybe have some kind of resistance that like oh oops everyone's best attack was lightning so everybody in the party like has these lightning abilities you know it, it it's like, kind of when all you've got is a hammer you know the whole world looks like a nail kind of thing you know. it's like every, you have characters that are optimized Players who have optimized their characters towards, you know, just pure violence are going to try to solve every problem with pure yeah. violence, and uh, because their characters suck at everything else, so yeah, why well, they're tell walking you. or sneaking in when you can just walk through a wall yeah. and <laughs> collapse the building on top of you? Well, you, you know? just you wind up with a lot of decisions where, like, I could take this spell that does a shitload of damage, or I could take this spell that like doesn't help combat, but like might really help us solve a puzzle or deal with an NPC. And in yeah. a party where, like, everyone has already taken, like, the home wrecker spells, you know, it's worth it to, like, I don't want to say bite the bullet, but, like, you know, don't just follow the guide you saw on <coughs> online and yeah, pick, like, absolutely. all the bright blue options, if you know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> I've you know. been the GM for groups like that, and let me tell you, there gets a point where you're just, like, you just up the ante over and over again because you want to find something that can fucking challenge these people. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's a lot of times where that sort of misstep happens where you just kind of overreach a little bit and it's like, whoops, I tuned the encounter up too high because everybody was deleting everything in one hit and not taking any damage. Yeah, it's it, it feels like, like as a player, it feels like shit when the DM throws something at you that's directly designed to be counter to your abilities. But when you've made it so that everything that's not completely immune to what you can do dies within two rounds, then what other choice do they have? Yeah, I mean, yeah. You, as a player, you can you can ruin the challenge as well, and you're kind of backing the DM into a corner sometimes. That's when, personally, I prefer to start throwing weird, um, like, uh, so puzzles... Um, well, not, you know, okay, if, if, if they're gonna, you know, own every combat, then we have to start providing interesting things that are like non-competitive or yeah. they're doing combats where like you know you're, you're trying to protect the these people thing, yeah. so oh yeah yeah that's a good one too like interesting environments you know like you're fighting on like some swinging bridge that's moving back and forth so like enemies are kind of coming and going um but like you know throw a couple npcs into the fight that like aren't godlike and now you're not it's a you know okay you're you're tough as nails can soak everything never get hit but these guys can't and you yeah, have kind of to look out man. for them kind of a thing you know throw some shitty escort missions at them give them a sewer level <laughs> just rip it right from bad game design give them the gold nine italia treatment <laughs> this bitch gonna run right into every combat encounter better keep her alive <laughs> you don't get your paycheck good luck better block the bullets with your body because it's the only <laughs> way she's gonna stay alive oh yeah, yeah. I, and just like situations where violence is not only not the optimal choice but will actively make things worse 
but I think uh, you got to be careful because some people like again i played with a lot of people who were just kind of generally shit stirrers in general <laughs> who would go out of their way to make things worse because they thought it was funny because they were all sociopaths um <laughs> and so you get like people who just like who just kill the npc on their own because they think it's funny or they find him annoying it's like oh my character doesn't care he's like true neutral or some bullshit like that like, <laughs> chaotic uh, neutral it's neutral. my character <laughs> wait that doesn't you can chaotic neutral aka kill me as soon as you can <laughs> oh boy Mo- voted most likely to be killed in his sleep <laughs> rocks fallen <laughs> in the end it's okay yeah. Terrible tragedy. Shoddy masonry in the roof, right over the bed. Yeah, just throw some diseases at him. Give him lockjaw. <laughs> <laughs> I will admit, diseases are something that I have never, I don't think, ever used actually in any of my uh, tabletop endeavors. Except for there was times where they were like baked right into like old modules that I've run with other systems. Mm-hmm. Um, but I find that like I don't know. As a player, I don't think it feels very nice to be like, yeah, sorry, you have the clap because you fucking <laughs> got, you, you cut your hand on the jaggedy piece of metal there, you know? Everyone um, but, gets tetanus. Yeah, like, I think they can be interesting, and I especially think that, like, something like a big plague is, like, an interesting backdrop from, like, a, a story perspective, like, as a narrative device. Um, but I don't know. I feel like unless you're playing a system where downtime has, like, something meaningful for players to do, your choices are basically go out and try and like fight people while you're suffering from this horrible disease or just like, you know, sit in the inn sipping on health potions until you feel better. Just shit it all out of your body. Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah just give everyone <laughs> salmonella. <laughs> Cholera. Do a juice cleanse. Man, that sounds like a fun RPG mechanic. Every time you make camp or consume a ration, you roll to see food poisoning. I, I, I <laughs> am certain that this is a mechanic buried in fatal somewhere. Oh, absolutely. We're gonna we're gonna take a look at that someday. I'm not I'm not giving up on that one. It's like the like I, I'm pretty sure these were bullshit stories, but you'd occasionally hear things on uh, message boards about DMs who'd like give characters like penalties because their players didn't say they were going to the bathroom or something. Oh, and like, come oh, on, yeah. It's like fucking simulate. Like, I have a I have a real bone to pick with simulationist people. <laughs> like, role I have, play breathing. Yeah, it's yeah. like you got to say uh, inhale, exhale, or else you'll suffocate. <laughs> yeah. And like the thing was like apparently this guy would like have the characters get attacked by like orc ninjas while they were taking a shit. So like, so like everyone, whenever somebody had to take a dump, like the entire party would have to like form a ring around him, backs to him, <laughs> the shitter failing by a tree, yeah, <laughs> to avoid him getting his throat cut while he had his pants around his ankles. Like, oh. yeah, it's funny in retrospect, but. God, that would be so annoying to play. Yeah, with. it doesn't sound. That sounds like a GM who's just actively. No, I, mean, I want to talk all day about collaborative gaming versus like DM versus players, but mm-hmm. that's just mean. And yeah, annoying. I want to. I want to know the escalation behind that. Like, where did it start? <laughs> you know, that first session did not have the fucking I, yeah. detect feces I like... ninjas, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> something. I either mean... got some magical realm business, or like maybe this. It's one of those DMs who just had power gamer players and has been right. pushed to the brink of. That's... Madness. I want to hear I, the I, ability I, to it challenge was, them. It was I'd fucking like Kevin Garan. <laughs> I'd like to hear the, the like the testimony from the defendant on that one. Like, okay, what <laughs> yeah. what did what were they doing to you? Tell us, <laughs> like, show us in the in the manual where they hurt you. Yeah, uh, what's his name? They're not not Garan. Grenad, the guy from the guy who programs a uh, cataclysm. Oh, 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 Grenade, oh, Grenade Day Grenade? or whatever. Grenade? I don't, yeah. Who the fuck knows how to Kevin. pronounce that? <laughs> the, that fucking item named after him, the the Grenade, the Grenade, mm-hmm. the, like, that yells nerfs when it goes off. Yeah, like nerfs his debuffs. Uh, buffs his buffs. And then there's one called like Bug Fixes and it... I don't oh. remember what it does. That was a funny little Easter egg, though. I remember yeah, that the first one time you found it, you threw it at your feet because you thought it might be like a buff thing and killed you instantly. <laughs> yeah, that was not fun. Mm. <laughs> anyway, what we're talking about is a, a roguelike game called a Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead, which we've all had a lot of fun with, but the dev sometimes seems to take things in a bit of a, a counter 
positive direction. No, I think it's a. It's actually like it's a perfect example of what we're talking about, though. Where like people play the game and they're like, oh, it's so easy. I've got all these mods, and then they're like, okay, well, we're gonna make it so you uh, now you have to take painkillers before you can install mods, and then people bitch, but then yeah. you know they they get that done and then they're you know oh game's too easy when are they going to add more content and then someone starts talking about how they're going to add having to like brush your teeth to the game and everyone starts <laughs> fucking shaking sorry that's dude a, you gotta that's really root canal you gotta find a that, doctor robot you gotta knock your own tooth out with a spice <laughs> gate like in castaway <laughs> oh nice <laughs> uh, i still don't know if that was a joke or if that was a serious suggestion that was like brought up to gain like the, I, I mean the hygiene it. thing is like I can see it happening but I don't think it make I don't think simulationism necessarily makes for fun gameplay no no I think I think it there's a, something to be said for if you have a group of people who really enjoy that like I am guilty of certainly being a fan of a lot of like really rules heavy systems and like I I realize that like a lot of times in actual play, it's not really terribly practical, but like I really, I do see the appeal in that sort of gaming. So I think it's kind of like a, your mileage may vary thing. Mm -hmm. If you have a group of hardcore simulationists who want to play GURPS with every splat and optional rule, like more power to you, but we're going to get to GURPS uh, at some point, aren't we? That's poison to somebody. That was my, that was my Shadowrun group growing up was that we, we were, you know, counting every single bullet we fired. We were playing with every every splat like all the expanded like healing and injury rules um and like when i'm not recording this podcast and hanging out with you guys i'm playing like military grade flight sims all the time with other people so like (laughs) i've got that that and it took you 45 minutes to take off yeah boy (laughs) (laughs) jesus christ and i'm hard as a rock the whole time Your co-pilot is bickering about who uses what radio frequencies for ten minutes. Yeah, I yelled at him for saying thank you over the radio. (laughs) (laughs) You're not being brief. That's not military standard. We don't thank each other. And then I caught myself flew into a plane. Yeah, we crashed. (laughs) And I yelled at him. You see, I could hear him eating food in the fucking back seat. <laughs> just imagine that, like your gunner's just eating Cheetos while you're in the he middle. Takes of- his like rebreather off so you can like shovel some like day old cheesecake into his mouth while you guys are flying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how'd you how'd you even get that in here? <laughs> but yeah, that's. I mean, you so, know, in, there's a time and a place for it. I think, like like oh, Zach yeah, said, when everybody's on board, it can be kind of fun to like. It, it kind of adds to the realism like a little bit, but th- there is like a razor's edge where you're, you know, again, like, I don't want to have to role play like, oh, I have to go take a piss and my character is starving <laughs> to death. I don't if I don't eat something in the middle of this like clandestine mission, like, oh, no, you know, that's Keep not protein bars yeah. in your operation satchel. Yeah. I mean, it's quick energy. It's yeah, it's cool to like have an item like that around and like maybe just for flavor, like pull one out and be eating one when we're talking about like mission planning. But like if I'm counting carbohydrate intake of my character versus like <laughs> anabolic <laughs> activity for the day, like, OK, stop. Like you consult the digestion oh my chart. Christ, you know, there's got to be some system out there. Oh, I guarantee, man, I guarantee. I think that the same conversation can be applied to power gamers, actually, because I think that some people really just enjoy playing that numbers game, you know? Oh, yeah, I mean... Like, they get the satisfaction out of it. But And I'll, we'll have him on the show eventually, just to show how possible it is to break a system over your knee. But my friend Kyle is a savant when it comes to this sort of thing. Like, he can just, like, he finds builds, like... Mm-hmm. He doesn't just like look them up, but he can like see have, how the numbers fit together. The legend of Kyle seeing the Matrix yeah. code. <laughs> yeah, he's like Rain Man when it comes numbers. to this sort of thing. Yeah, after a while, you don't see the numbers; you just see a fucking <laughs> half orc ranger. Yeah, <laughs> I I've had a lot of frustration with my real life group for a little while because they're two of my players. Like they just they always would like power game to like at the expense of their character like their guy was basically just a hollow shell with a sword and i kind of just had to accept the All fact that that was the game like yeah. were you in like in three five once that optional flaws rule was was uh, <laughs> implemented and like everybody took like murky eyed and like the ones that made it so your range attacks had a missed chance but like none of these characters were ranged characters so they basically started with two extra feats 
<laughs> yeah, that's like yes, yeah, stuff like that. Like it was the worst when we played mutants and masterminds, and I was like, you know what? That's just that's what they like to do, and I just gotta you know that's that's what they enjoy. It's not an affront to me. I just <laughs> I just gotta let it go. Mm. <laughs> just. I have to become the bigger bullshitter. <laughs> now, if I have to, if I have to sit down to play another like cyberpunk game with someone who's like kidnapped at birth and experimented on to become a super weapon and has every social flaw in the book, I'm just gonna fucking scream. I can't do it anymore. Did I tell you guys about my my guy in my group um, who played on seven different occasions? Mute samurai. <laughs> I think you like did, different systems actually. and everything. No, th- all all D and D. Was this off? Oh, I don't like remember that. if this was actually during the episode or like during a post discussion. Shit, I, I yeah, do recall he just ugh, apparent. Oh man, this guy, poor guy. I just don't want to talk about him too much. But uh, <laughs> he was uh, overall a sweet guy, but kind of lacking in a lot of cognitive areas. <laughs> but not in number of swords he probably owned in real life. Way up on that one. Oh, oh my god. You want to talk about people who collect swords. You should see the guys I used to hang out with. My best friend drove around with like half a dozen in his trunk all the time. He hit a raccoon in my what? He he hit a raccoon in my driveway and got out and got out his sword and killed it. Oh my god. <laughs> Finally, that must have been the most. That day justified yeah. all of those purchases to him. That's <laughs> yeah. That's he we recited were, a few lines from the Bushido Code yeah. before he chopped its head off, kind of uh, thing. Or? We were like, they were like mall ninjas, except there were no malls around where we lived. <laughs> we had to drive an hour to this creepy like karate supply, karate paintball and knife store to buy this kind of garbage. Those are three I things you need at the same time. <laughs> I Hell bought yeah. my brother a empty grenade husk there for his birthday, and he made it into a shifter for his Jeep. <laughs> that's cool. I'm into wow, that. That's cool. That's, um, I think the term is cornfield ninjas. In yeah. That <laughs> nice. Yeah, we, I, nice. I, I do come from a fucking hick. Oh, my God. If I ever drove down, down the road and saw a bunch of hick kids in the fucking field and they're just threshing down plants with fucking like cheap metal <laughs> katanas, I'd fucking die. That would be the greatest. Oh, we, we used to put make boffer swords out of PVC pipe and insulation and duct tape. I think somebody got his finger broken during one of those. Hardcore it's, LARP. It still hurt like a, like the bejesus. It was like getting hit with a baseball with a baseball bat and a pillowcase. You fight until you are no longer able to fight physically and need yeah, to be we taken didn't, to the hospital. Yeah, we didn't really have like uh you know like um win criteria. It was just basically whoever gave up because you were wailing on him if too he hard. dies he dies or, or like he got hit in the eye so hard that he had to sit down for a while <laughs> that kind of thing or like i might have lost a tooth sort of or like i'm not sure if my nose is broken kind of situation yeah. <laughs> but everybody either let's um do you want to just take a peek at our boy vondel real quick yeah let's get we've we've bullshit enough for now <laughs> we've but. wasted enough of your time um we're we're gonna level him up. So we started at level one. We kind of mm-hmm. cranked through all that stuff to just give a little refresher here. He is a very strong, very high constitution lad with uh, chainmail. Yeah, dwarf chainmail and a warhammer and a shield. So he's very durable. He, I believe, we're, for his background, we got uh, soldier. Um. Mm-hmm. So he has some. He has he has a little background in whatever you know the dwarven military of whatever setting you would care to transpose him into. Um, I don't think we picked an alignment for him, actually, did we? No. Oh, yeah, we didn't. It's one of those things that's not really mechanically relevant anymore, but I feel like, I feel like we should. I still think there are a few spells that can fuck you up if you're, like, um, like, if you're yeah, an it's... evil cleric. You have, like, an evil aura and, like... Those, those got changed, actually. The did any they? Yeah, all the ones in this edition that detect evil, um, or good, they now, it, like, is a subset of monsters, so it's, like, demons, devils, celestials elementals and aberrations i think right. you can't actually use them on regular sapients with that alignment huh. um which i think is them kind of trying to backseat alignment because i mean i could talk for hours about why i think alignment for player characters is a bad system but um it's kind of they just have been like moving away from it compared to like you know like second edition where it's like if you're not lawful good you full stop are not allowed to be a paladin at all yeah you know, I think that persisted so it's like, all the way up through fourth. There were still some like must be lawful to be a monk or paladin yeah, elements, but like but the they fourth had, had like a billion classes of like not quite paladin, 
Yeah, to when they had already... Fourth, fourth already, element system was weird. Yeah, they'd it, already like, started was gutting awful. some of the alignments from it. Yeah, that, that was, they off, had the Z shape. Chaotic good. You couldn't yeah. do chaotic good, which is chaotic good is one of my favorite alignments because it's like, it's like fuck it, I'm helping everyone. I don't give a shit what the consequences are, kind of thing. Yeah. That's like that's and like no shown in protagonist. Either. Yeah, I it, really it, it kind of well. it kind of implied that law that good is inherently lawful and evil is inherently chaotic, which kind of seems kind of bullshit. <laughs> I think that part, it might be like some stored baggage too, because I think, and is, do not quote me on this because I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that the first editions of D&D had law and chaos, but not good or evil as like metaphysical yeah. concepts. So, so they, were, like, they were Shin Megami Tensei. <laughs> yeah, hey, you know right. what, that's, a, <laughs> that's actually a pretty good parallel to draw, but um, yeah, so it, um, that's kind of, and then I think second edition added good and evil, and then you got like your nine point alignment scale. Um, which again, not really a fan of. Which has been turned into many notes. memes I mean, for every. I mean, fucking. And I mean, I mean comic people book can and anime and probably property actually, ever. People will and probably actually have drawn blood over the alignment system. Oh God, That's countless that. internet arguments wherever you go on like, like especially for like popular characters of fiction. Yeah, like Batman. Batman, 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 Batman. argument. Jesus yep. Christ. Batman is every Batman. fucking alignment. Batman's yeah. alignment is Batman. It's I've just, I've seen that chart too. There's one. It's like the nine point alignment system, and like Batman with like a supporting quote or incident yeah. to suggest that he is all nine alignments. And but that because think, he's a very developed character. Like exactly. he's not he's not a you know he's. I mean, Batman has existed for long enough that he's become a you know a character who is very human in his own way, and that he's got yeah. a lot of uh, facets. Like he's yeah, yeah, he's got a lot, good 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 word. But yeah. like it's uh you know he's not always like. He does a lot of shit that pisses off a lot of the other Justice Leaguers because they're like, yeah, he doesn't kill, but he does a lot of nasty shit to people. Yeah, and uh, I always thought that was interesting because, like, well, if you okay. play like Arkham City, yeah, he can, made, like, breaks people's arms, but these are people who are like out killing people. So oh, it's absolutely. Like, but it's like, so you're in like this walled off prison place, right? You beat the shit out of someone, you probably break a few of their limbs and then just leave them yeah. in the snow in the middle of like a fucking city prison. I, yeah. A few of them had to have died from exposure, like. You can't you can't completely absolve yourself of responsibility if you break both of a person's legs and leave them bleeding in snow <laughs> yeah. where there is no emergency I didn't, services. Of any I didn't see that happen. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. 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 I don't yeah, have to. I'm not going to kill you, but I don't have to save you either. <laughs> from not my uh, fucking problem. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, he is okay. He was uh, breathing when I left him. I didn't. Uh, yeah. What? What do you mean? He died. Oh. Uh, I got. I got oh, God, to do with we're, that. We're going off on a Let's tangent again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry. Just play the joke. Uh, yeah, penguin. Uh, uh, I saw penguin. Uh, I passed penguin <laughs> in the hallway. It was probably him. He probably probably killed him. Yeah. Yeah. No. I, yeah, I These Batman's kind of sound like Nathan Explosion. <laughs> 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 yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Brutal. It's fucking brutal. <laughs> <laughs> I have a friend who looks like Nathan Explosion. That's badass. Nice. Which is hilarious <laughs> because he's like he doesn't he's not like him at all. But he's got like he's got like the long black hair and like it's We just, are Oh god, like, listen, we're okay. We gotta get back. Back alignment. to the, back the dwarf hammer. machine. What is dwarves um, dwarves tend dwarves to be lawful. General, yeah, dwarves are kind of like have like more of like a they, they value structure. Yeah. And he um, was a soldier too, which means like you got like, you know, the structure of military yeah. life. So it's probably Obviously. at least lawful. Um, yes, the good, the good neutral. That really is depending on what we want to do. Do we want to play a guy who's like you know he really believes in like the tenets of law and justice, or do we want to play like a like a jaded ass horrors of war kind of kind of dwarf? I mean, he can always guy be one of those like brutally lawful good kind of a person too. Yeah. Oh, I hate those fuckers. Like stole a loaf of bread, so I'll pulp your hand with a hammer. Yeah, because that's what the that's what the law says. It's not my choice. I just looked in the book, man. That's <laughs> that's the dwarf fortress justice kind of. Thing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, the hammer. He is a, already kind of it on his way to being a pretty good hammerer. I say we just go with it. Lawful yeah. neutral, like just yeah. kind of. Jesus, he is the right. law, baby. It's in the book. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, uh, if we advance him to level two, um, one thing that I really like about fifth edition is that like all of your level up stuff is in the class chart. Like, there's not like a generic advancement chart that you have to reference to like see when your ability scores increase. It's all there. So, level two, the only thing we get is we get one use of the action surge power, which just gives you an extra standard action. Um, sort of allow you to attack twice, or like, you know, like use a skill, like make a strength check and then attack. Um, 
I, in my experience, really using good. attacking twice, yeah, it is good. And it, yeah, attacking good. twice is usually what you do. But you could also use it to like quaff a potion and then also stab someone in the head, same turn kind of thing. Uh, but it's good, and it gets better as you get more stuff, you know, because it opens up the door to some one turn combos mm-hmm. that no other class. Well, can stuff do. that yeah, you can yep. set your el- yourself up for something. You can use something that's like until the end of your next turn and like milk two, you know, attacks with that bonus yeah. on. Um, it's just so clutch, like. Um, it sounds like such a simple thing, um, that means yeah. like so, so much. And you get it back after only a short or long rest. Like, yeah, to yeah, be, short to rest be fair, is like what a 10 minute, like, let me like wipe the blood off of myself kind mm-hmm. of thing. And like, be, in breath. fifth, it's an hour actually. Okay. They did increase that, but I know a lot of people like, um, Matt Mercer of Critical Role, uh, which is wildly popular. Um, hey, one of hey, the house, stop name dropping right away. <laughs> <laughs> you're right I'm, I'm just leaking cloud at the fucking seams all of our fans <laughs> just left to go listen to that all five of them <laughs> yeah stop recommending people who are better than us like <laughs> it's it's a it's an actual play it's different but he he cut it back to 10 minutes and i know that's really common um just because like an hour for a short rest that's not really short um and it really, it feels a weird niche because like a lot of times if you can stop for an hour, then you can stop for eight hours, you know, mm-hmm. like you can take a full rest because if you're, you're already committing to putting aside a relatively large block of time, I think that thematically a 10 minute rest fits better. But, um, I, I don't know. That's, that's just me. But yeah, so that it does, it is a little bit more lengthy than just like a 10 minute catch your breath. That's yeah. I've always considered it as a GM that like, if you have enough time to, to stop and decide for yourself when like the next step of action is going to happen, then you can take a short rest. If you're not yeah, like exactly. fighting people so that you can run up the stairs to the next floor of the castle and save the day, like then you can take a short rest. Yeah. But if you're, I, if you're I, like, I, like kill everyone on the first floor and you're like, there's only one way up. So you know that if somebody's coming there, so they're going to come down there. You can kind of just bar the door to right, it and yeah. just, Yep. gather your strength and then yeah it's only but, like um, when you're in the middle of a battlefield or like you know on the yeah, seas like you're yeah, fighting yeah, ship like, to ship go, but go, like go, go, go. yeah like you don't really control the timing of the scene right now then no you you cannot take a yeah. short rest you're still yeah. in the thick of it and depending on what kind of game you're playing it might even get wrapped into like you're traveling like if everyone's just kind of like walking or like riding on a wagon or something it's just like yeah you can short rest that, then too yeah so that's, that counts yeah, Usually, I think that's kind of how we're doing it in the game I'm in, right? Now. Yeah, I yeah. don't think I've ever um, been in a game where they were like real strickler or sticklers. Sorry for um, like yeah. no, you know, short rest, blah blah blah. Um, it was every, only fifty-seven minutes. Yeah, and everybody, <laughs> I've, every game I've ever played has <laughs> always been. <laughs> yeah, the alarm went off too early. Yeah. Um, oh. Everyone's always we been just very charitable reports. with like oh, short geez. and long rests, and I don't think I've ever been, you know, like oh, this is really ruining the game balance from you know the yeah. fact that we can just you know, re, you know it's fine it's yeah. Yeah. you know there was that was one thing that fourth edition did interestingly was like the longer you went without taking a, a rest you got like bonuses if i recall correctly uh-huh. like you like yeah you got, you, i forget what it was action but, points you would get more action yeah. points um right. that that was a cool concept actually you know i forgot about i haven't that played one. fourth in so goddamn long keep i don't the remember party going. Oh. keep the party going <laughs> yeah. um so the other thing we have to do actually is roll for hit points. So as a fighter, our hit die is a d10, and our constitution at 16 means our constitution modifier is a plus 3. So we roll a d10 and add 3 to it, Give and off. that will be our additional hit points right. for this level. So sorry if you want to roll that up. Right, Doug, okay, roll. here's the thing. You can either do that or you can take like half plus 1, which is oh, what, yeah, which I've, is been six doing, which is what I've been doing with like my bard because I have real bad luck when it comes to these rolls. I don't want to risk rolling a one on a guy who has a constitution of eleven. So, yeah. uh, but we'll roll for this just to add a little extra, you know, element yeah. of randomness. So, uh, throw it in into my tray here. I don't even remember where I bought this thing. It's been so long. Oh, what do we get? We got a four, so a little a below four? average. So seven, yeah. seven hit points. Seven hit points. So our Previous total was 13. That puts us squarely at 20, which is a nice round number. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing we get, we already talked about the second win. Uh, action, yeah. action surge. Action surge, I'm sorry. Um, so that's basically all it is for second level. It's a little underwhelming, but, you know, it, it'd be like that sometimes. No decisions yeah. to make. <laughs> just have some very handy class feature. 
Yes. I oh feel my like God. it's so and uniquely fighter too. Like that's one thing that really sets fighters apart in this system is action surge and multiple attacks. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's it's pretty good. Yeah, we ran into a bunch of like just goons that could do that, and they've almost killed a couple of us. <laughs> like <laughs> Jesus. just fighting like you know bandits that it's just kind of like. Oh, you can attack twice. That really means a lot when you've got 13 yeah, hit points. Yeah, that's a lot. That's big. Class levels. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. Um, um, yeah, then, so... Okay, so third level. Let's yeah. roll his hit dice hit points first because there yeah. is this is where it gets, starts getting interesting. So yeah, We're kind of on the topic right now. So give me third level. Maybe. He gets... Oh, my God. I rolled a one. <sighs> oh, no. So that's so a four. four. So he gets... 24 hit points. Four. Not great for a fighter, but... He's no, a little below average, average now, but... Oh, well. Okay, yeah. but this is where we get the martial archetype, which is where you start making that first class deci- de- defining choice. Yeah, fighter has three uh, in the core. Champion, which is did we discuss this last time? We which is um, may have mumbled about it a little champion bit. Champion but- sucks. Yeah, champion <laughs> kind of sucks. It's an interesting concept. It's more like a guy who's less about fighting and more about just like physical perfection. It sounds so like a lot of things. I was going to say, it it's sounds like, like crap a- until you look at the last ability it gets, though. The Survivor at level 18, but go through go through them, I think. Yeah, um, okay. You get improved critical, which means your weapons score a critical hit on a roll of 19 or 20, which is pretty important because in this useful. system, in it's this system there Johnny are no crit abilities. ranges. Yeah, it's, it's for good old Johnny who just wants to roll big numbers and smack yeah. shit with his axe. It's fun. Yeah. So it's for a little bit of context... <laughs> Most of the so every class has multiple subclasses, and all of the sub as far as I know, all of the subclasses in the game give you really kind of interesting things, except for Fighter Champion, which literally just <laughs> improves your basic melee attacks, which is like it's the least interesting thing you really can do. Mm-hmm. Um, and like high crit, you know, it's good mechanically. It's you know you'll you'll get mileage out of it, but it is so goddamn boring. And you'll yeah. see as we go through the abilities, it's not so good. <laughs> Then he gets a remarkable athlete at seventh level, which just allows him to add half his proficiency bonus to strength decks or constitution checks that don't already use your proficiency bonus. It's a shittier version of the bard's jack of all trades. Mm-hmm. It doesn't um, can do make a new. running long jump. Hey guys, yeah, except for that, how many times does that ever come up? Seriously, <laughs> <laughs> you can make at a running level. long jump. Oh, sorry. Wait a minute. Yeah, sorry, go. Yeah, go over this here. Running long jump, the distance you can cover increases by a number of feet equal to your strength modifier. So that is the one new thing that you get at this level. But like they, we kind of already touched on... That's a mix that, maximum of five feet! <laughs> that's no... Oh, your modifier, not even your yeah, score. Yeah, not your whole strength, no. A five... Like, Jesus, like, I could probably do that by practicing for a month. Check out that's this like five-foot yeah. horizontal leap. Yeah. <laughs> for context, that is one extra map square if and only if you have absolutely munchkin maxed your strength score to 20, which most people, well, they might have done that by seventh level, especially if they picked fucking champion for some god awful reason. That is one extra average map hex of five feet. <laughs> that's so shitty. That's so worthless. <laughs> By that God. point, your wizard should be floating you across yeah. the castle. Well, I mean, mass look, spider climb or something. It's called remarkable athlete, not amazing athlete. He's just a <laughs> guy. You just kind of take notice of like, oh, he it's, jumps it's, kind of far. It's the yeah. golf you'd, clap you'd, class feature. Yeah, you'd place at a track meet, probably. He's remarkable. <laughs> he's I mean, really he's strong. not the best I've ever seen, but he's remarkable. He'd probably he's take the, like silver. He's the Scotty Pippen of fighters. <laughs> You know, if, but with, combined with being a dwarf in this case, an extra five feet, like, horizontal leap is, like, a little more substantial. Kind of funny to imagine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we got uh, short legs, okay? It's fucking... Hi-ya. Yeah, all right. Leave it alone. <laughs> all right. With a slightly more, uh, slightly more um, useful, at 10th level, you get an additional fighting style, which is what we were talking about last time, where we picked dueling, I believe, when you're mm-hmm. wielding a one-handed melee weapon and no yeah. other weapons. You get a plus two to damage rolls. So he could get something like uh, like defense and just get an extra plus one AC when he's wearing armor or something like that. Yeah. It, again, it's useful, but it's not exciting. It's like... It, no. It could be, I think, if you I want think- if you actually took like a completely different one. Like maybe you took like archery or something. But the thing is, the kind of player who's going to pick champion to me, seems like the kind of player who's only ever going to attack with their absolute best weapon. Yeah. They're not going for any sort of width in their character, or they would have picked literally anything else. They would have picked a ranger if they wanted to be able to fight at range and in melee. 
Yeah, exactly. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I, I think that in the context of champion, that ability is worse than it seems. Yeah, and it's 10th level. If you got it earlier, maybe it would matter. But at that point, yeah. it feels like it's kind of starting to fall off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at 15th level, you get superior critical, where you crit on an 18 to 20. So, it's you know, good. Crits, crits are double damage. That doesn't, that is not, that is nothing to sneeze at. But again, it just doesn't feel useful. Yeah, like, you'll get mileage out of it, but at the same time, like, especially in the context of any other subclass, it's so boring. Well, the fact that you can't count on it or choose when to employ it either is kind of like, we are at the mercy of the dice. Yeah. This next one, though. Survivor. Holy shit. At 18th level. That's two steps away from max level. This is at, like, the end of a long game. You might get this if you somehow tough through 18 levels as a fucking you've, Yeah, you have community. not multi-classed much at all. You've been <laughs> in on that fighter train the whole time. <laughs> just like, yeah, I make my basic attack. You just at, the start of, <laughs> yeah, at the start of each of your turns, you regain hit points equal to 5 plus your constitution modifier if you have no more than half your hit points left. You don't get this benefit if you have zero hit points. So basically, you have regeneration. You but, are Call of Duty, the man. Yeah, you have cool. regenerating health up to half, which is cool. That's great. But at 18th level, your con modifier is going to be maybe is going to be five at most, probably. Yeah, yeah. And your hit points so, are going to be like probably pretty close to a hundred. I yeah. bet. Yes, yeah, so you'll gain ten points. Even. You'll gain maybe ten points around. Somewhere between like, like eight to ten points around, I'd imagine. Yeah. At that point, yeah. when you're fighting like dragons that can breathe like forty damage per round, it's like. Is it really going to save your ass? And at 18th level, you should have an absolutely insane breadth of different stuff to call on. Like, you know, D&D campaigns don't happen in a camp in a fucking vacuum. You'll have, like, piles of gold at that point. You might even have your own estate, so you can, like, buy healing potions. You can have, like, a, an attendant cleric who just follows you around and casts heal on you, you know? Like, in, like, yeah. it's one yeah. of those things that, like, in the context of a campaign where you are 18th level, you have better shit than that. Undoubtedly, yeah. I feel like over you, the you, course you, you of a accumulated. of a battle, if you know you're getting that extra healing every turn, like I feel like that's going to add up to something. Like when yeah, you, yeah, but if you're not, when you look you're back not on it, be hits. like, oh, I got you know 40, 50 hit points back for free over the course of that fight. Yeah. That's kind of cool. But if, but if you're not yeah. up in the scrum taking the hits that the squisher people don't have to, then like. I mean, you shouldn't have time well, to that's heal That's what your like extra that, you five know? foot horizontal leap is for, dude. Yeah, Get man. you in there. <laughs> Jump right the fuck in there. Here I come! So, uh, all right, in case you the... hadn't noticed, we don't think Champion is good. Yeah. Probably don't right. take it. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, that is the bore. That is the worst option. We're going to jump to... I'm going to jump to the second option, which is one another one we will probably not take, but it is an interesting one. Um... So we're going to skip over one and go to, to the Elvish third Knight. option, you mean? Not yes, the second third one. option. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> yes. I'm just, I'm <laughs> Numbers confused. don't matter. Nothing is nothing is real. <clears throat> that other Critical Role podcast yeah. is starting to look real attractive. <laughs> <laughs> took, took an extra five, like, used that extra five foot feet of leap to jump over. To we're jump oh, nice. Yeah, we're jumping a page yeah. ahead, kids, with That's our five foot. Eldritch Knight. This is the spell sword archetype. It's um, a fighter who can cast a limited supply of spells. Um, I think we should maybe breeze through the other ones because they're a little bit more chunky than Champion. Yeah. Um. This, but um. Yeah. Eldritch Knights get a uh, limited spell list from like Wizard spell list. They can get spells from first to fourth level. Um. And they get yeah. some cantrips, which are zero level spells that you never run out of, but don't do a whole lot. Um. They're they're like plank damage or little utility things. Yeah. Um. Spells go from first to ninth level, um, so they get little under half of what a wizard can get. Yeah, um, max. Level. And they can—I don't know—armor armor check panel or spell failure chance isn't a thing in this edition, is it? No, I don't think we've had that even since fourth. I think it's like it might be binary, like you just straight up can't cast spells. You yeah. have disadvantage on all casting rolls if you're wearing heavy armor until you get like feet for it. Mm, um, I think that that they ditched that remember. in. Th- Three five. I think that was only in the original third edition, and that was one of the what? three two really? three five changes no, that failure? they were like, get what rid of that shit. No, spell failure chance was three five. That was in three five. Like, okay, yeah, it, yeah. it might be. I seem to recall it too, and I don't know that I played much three zero. Basically, the concept play. is that to cast spells, you need to have a freedom of movement to like make intricate gestures with your hands. And wave and arms. your hands around. Yeah. And if you're wearing like a suit of full plate, you can't exactly like 
you know, we've, you can't exactly tie knots or something like that in the air. So it makes it much harder to cast spells. But um, that's neither here nor there, as that isn't really an issue. Um, these, uh, they don't, they don't um, have a spell book. They just commit their spells to memory. And at third level, they get a bond with a weapon. That's cool. Um, There's some cool a ritual in here. Over the course of one hour, uh, it can be done during a short rest. Um, and you bond a weapon to yourself. You can you cannot be disarmed of it unless you're incapacitated, and if it's, you're on the same plane of existence, you can summon it to your hand, summon it to your hand as a bonus action. That is so you just like you can pull your sword out of the air from fucking yeah, you can, anywhere. Like, yeah, as long yeah, as you can strut into the governor's ball with no weapons, and then like if you just decide you've had enough of somebody's shit, you just snap your fingers and it's there in your hand. The, somebody, you, gotta, you pull a great maul out of nothing. You just break <laughs> the table in half. And just because uh, somebody is probably likely to use it, you can do that onto two weapons at once. So your your two weapon Eldritch Knight from the cover of your favorite metal album can totally happen. This is like this is the example like have a bow or a sword, you know, depending on what the situation calls for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like oh, I'm gonna need to shoot somebody in the eye. So unfortunately, you're you are using intelligence as your spell casting ability. So this is like one fighter build you kind of have to plan for ahead. You gotta yeah, know you that, that you gotta want to do this. Very bad for our current current boy with yes. his of Von eight. Dahl's intelligence is eight. He's not terribly bright. He thinks that magic is a bunch of elf shit that he doesn't want any part of. Frankly. Um, so in case the reason we did this first is because we know we're not going to take yeah. it, but Eldritch Knight is cool. You get spell casting and you get all these cool little utility powers as you level up, like the ability to summon your sword. Yeah. At uh, the level you can, uh, the 15th you can level, cast, you can teleport can. behind you. Nothing personal. Oh <laughs> oh, well, let's, let's go through them real quick. Sure, sure, yeah. the War magic at seventh level, you can, uh, use your action to cat. When you use your action to cast a cantrip, you can use, make That's one weapon attack as a actually bonus action. Really fucking good. Which is yes. kind of cool, yeah, because you can like um, you can like blast somebody who's away and then smack the guy next to you or something you like even, that. Well, there's like I think there's a cantrip called Green Flame Blade where you literally just yes. like cut someone with your sword and it's wreathed in fire, so you yes. can literally just make two strikes and one of them is magical. So it's just a free attack, and you can awesome. use your action surge with that to do it again. Oh yeah, yeah. that's true. The extra attack is a bonus action, though. So you only oh, as a bonus, bonus, you're right. Nope, never yeah. mind. You can't do that. You still get three, though. Again. Three attacks on a <laughs> yeah. turn. And that stacks with any extra attacks you already get as a fighter, which by seventh level, I think you have at least one. So you're yeah, like, yeah. you can swing like four or five times a turn if you. You're, you're, yeah, you're going to cast a cantrip, do two attacks, and then you still have your action surge to like maybe throw one of your spells at someone. Just an insane flurry of blows. Yeah. Really cool. It yeah. gives like a cool little burst, like crazy, like anime moment where you just like slash a million times. You release your limiter for a moment and just like yeah. <laughs> un- you dump all your shit, and then you get dogpiled the next turn, probably. But, but here's uh, you know. <laughs> with Eldritch, Eldritch Strike is another one of those things where I was I was saying like if you action surge and you get two uses of it. Um, at tenth level, you learn how to make your weapon strikes undercut a creature's resistance to your spells. So if you hit someone with a weapon attack, that creature gets disadvantage, which is again that like roll two dice and take the lower of the two. Uh, they get disadvantage on their saving throw, their next saving throw against a spell you cast before the end of your next turn. So, you so it can, doesn't have to be on this turn. It's got to wait. You can wait until the next time. Yeah, but, but yeah. if you're action surging to like, you can whack someone with your sword and then immediately fire a spell at them that they'll have disadvantage to. Or yeah. you can you can do that and then on your next turn you can ca- you can get use out of that twice. If you have two spells, you can cast no, that next saving. Throw. It's only on it's the only next one. one. Oh but... shit! It is only one. Yeah, okay, that so yeah. I've, I've run into that with vicious mockery. Mm-hmm. Where it's <laughs> it's the next one. But not, it does uh, it lets you set that up and capitalize on it before like yeah. the next go round yeah. before they'll get a chance to do stuff and like when you really well, yeah, have to smack point. something hard right now like it's yeah, it's if very dipshit is like saving against your spells, you just run up and bash him with the hilt of your sword and then you try again <laughs> like fine now do it beamed yeah uh let's see arcane charge yeah that's the nothing personnel kid yeah move. Um, you literally just 15th teleport. level you gain the ability to teleport up to 30 feet and uncovered space when you use your action surge you can teleport before or after the additional action um and then at 18th level improved war magic when you use your action to cast a spell you can make one weapon attack as a bonus action that's the same uh, as War Magic. It's the it no, War Magic is only yeah. cantrips. Yeah, that's, that's what I mean. It's like it's improved War Magic because it's literally the same thing, but it works on any spell, not just cantrips. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is pretty cool. Because you, right. you get some beefier spells later on. So that's Eldritch Knight all the way up to level 18. 
And now, now here we comes the fun, the one the that's cool the, one. the cool one. Battle I love this one. Dude, I have played a battle guy, muscle fighter. Oh, this is a guy <laughs> who could do all kinds of tricks with his weapons and like trip people up and like mess with people just by the sheer prowess of his this martial is, ability. For, it's versatile too. Yeah. If you, because I mean, I'm not going to go really into the mechanics of it at this very moment, but it covers like somebody who's like a really adept duelist. And at the same time, you can also use it to play a guy who's like a shrewd tactician and like you can use it to like do like battlefield control and like tactics and help your allies too. Um, uh, so it's, it's yeah. really cool. If you're not reading along with us at home, we're on page 73 of the player's handbook, but I think it's kind of a giveaway. If you even just look at how this class is written in the book, it's two huge columns of just like, here's a ton of options and like bold italicized text listing all these cool moves that sound like shit you want to do. Like they really... Yeah. I feel like of the ones in the player's handbook, this one like really screams pick me. It is yeah. fantastic. And if you cool. if you played third edition and towards the end of its run, you might have been familiar with the Book of Nine Swords, which yeah. is a I'm still sad I never got to play as oh, a yeah, new yeah, yeah. user because that's like <laughs> uh, so aka the Book of Weeaboo Fight and Magic. <laughs> yeah. Um, which is be... basically the anime <laughs> maneuvers, the anime maneuvers classes where you shout the name of your ability and you punch somebody yeah. and you get sucked into an ordered dimension for a couple of seconds. Was it called thing. like Sword Sage or something like that? Sword, Sword Sage was the one that had the Warblade. most like, mystical stuff. Sword Sage, Warblade, one? and Crusader. Crusader this was like, like Wizards was like, shit, caster supremacy is really bad. We gotta make fighters good, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Put out this book. Crusaders what are these kids like, like that anime more. shit? Give them the whole book of that. There we go. <laughs> There's really Crusaders. Fun. Crusaders? Oh god, I got a nosebleed. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just blow my nose and I wipe my hand and I'm like, ah, fuck. Too much That's intense fighter action. Yeah. Oh, I'm just like, he's weeb been... too hard. <laughs> Everyone back off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Crusaders were the um, were ones that got like divine inspiration, so they didn't have like full control over which maneuvers they could use at once. Like, I actually had one of them in one of my games once, um, and he. Uh, had like a deck of cards that were the like he pulled to show the ones that were uh, he was available to that turn. Oh god, he was yeah, like Yu Gi Oh. No, I mean <laughs> that was that was my that was my idea because like oh. otherwise you kind of just got to select them at random and like. That's oh, kind so of it's like a deck of power cards. cards. Oh, he. Ha- yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm picturing him in character, like no, no, hi-ya, <laughs> like pulling out a card and like showing it. Some of this dark magician. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I activate my sword in the face down position. <laughs> What made him, what makes Crusader different from to go off on a slight other tangent? Not that we need anymore. What makes Crusader different than like a paladin? Because in my mind, like the divine oh. fighter that well, Crusaders are painted to be, it's just, less. Well, it's you know, it's just less of it's less magic and more, uh, you know, fight so hard. But reality. in the name of your god, okay, <laughs> yeah, I, I had can dig. They had some interesting ex. Like their stuff was like they had a couple of disciplines they had access to that were. That the other classes didn't that were mystical yeah. in certain ways. Sword Sage was like more physically fragile, but they could do a lot of weird like ninja stuff, like a lot of Naruto style crap. <laughs> like literally, one of their ninth level maneuvers is called Five Shadow Creeping Ice Enervation Strike. Jesus, that is a fucking wordy ass name. Yeah. I'm, all right, yeah. What are you, what are you, here's what, a, what are you, I'm giving you a, like a little golf clap for here. remembering all of that. Holy Dude, shit, I have, man. I have, I have, I have, I have a memory for absolutely <laughs> useless information. Uh, let's get let's get back to Vondal. Yeah, but, our, but anyway, our yes, Vondal Vondal will be a battle master, which means yeah. he'll have some of these maneuvers, which are kind of like uh, he'll, he gets uh, his first ability is called Combat Superiority at third level. He gets um, learns maneuvers that are fueled by special dice called Superiority dice. He gets three maneuvers. We'll get them in here, here in a second once I explain the rest of these uh, the rest of these concepts of these abilities. Superiority dice are D eight. You get four of them. Um, you, you, they are expended when you use it. That's a completely... <laughs> wow, what a useless sentence. A superiority <laughs> die is expended when you use it. Um, you get them at the, back at the end of a, of a short or long rest, which is the bard I'm jealous of because I don't get my uh, inspiration dice back until 5th level. Mm-hmm, um, you get an extra one at 7th level and one at fifth level, 15th level. Um, and also at 3rd level, a little less impressive than the maneuvers, um, but you gain proficiency with one type of artisan's tools of your choice. Okay, but anyway, you want to latch that one real quick before we move on, just because it's real quick. What do we want? What, perf- um, what uh, artisan yeah, tool we want to give Vondo that. access to? I mean, yeah, I mean, he'll probably want to be able to make his own weapons or like uh, smithing is a good one. Yeah, Smith's jewelry tools. is actually another classic. Did dwarf we already have to, like, one? From... He's a brewer. Yeah, the brewer. Yeah, okay, tools. that's right. Yeah, 
So he's a, he's already a brewer. So this this is like an addition to that. He also gets a, a little thing. Smithing is I've never even in high level campaigns I've never seen smithing be used by a PC just because I find in general it takes forever it, it, it takes forever realistically to make a sword. Yeah, and you can just pay somebody who is as good as you to do it instead, kind of thing. Somebody um, who has to go off and beat people up. Is exactly. it already? I think jewelry might be a good one. Jeweler's tools, because like that's useful in a dungeon context. If you want to like appraise some gems you found, you know what I mean? Yeah, mm-hmm. that'd be cool. Is he, and is it, that, it's pretty quintessentially is it, dwarven too. Yeah. Is it broken down into like armor smithing, weapon smithing, or is it just in general smithing? Because uh, we could also use. Look at he could also that's be using that to like somewhere. maintain his gear too. Let me take a look. That's true. Tools. Um, I don't imagine he's lugging tools. a whole anvil around, but like you know, maybe yeah, some files <laughs> and clamps and pliers and stuff. Yeah. All right. Artisans' tools. There are a bunch of them: alchemists, brewers, calligraphers, carpenters, cartographers, cobblers, cook, glass Cobbler. blower, jeweler, leather worker, mason, painter, potter, smith, tinker, weaver, and wood carver. So just smith. Hell yeah. Okay. Cobbler, come on, baby. Cobbler. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. I like make shoes. shoes. He's marching. It's he's my day a, job. When is Carpenter ever, ever, like... <laughs> I mean, there I can, are some games where you, like, end up building, you know, building your own stronghold or something and having a guy who can actually knows what he's doing would save you a lot of money. I just admit, like, what is the Carpenter's toolkit? It's just, like, a saw? A bunch of, Hammer, like, probably, nails, like, tool belt. Uh, uh, probably more, like, um... It's a like, bunch of stuff uh, from Binford. Crafting, things like, uh... Uh-huh. Things like, um... I'd say just stuff that allows him to like design buildings as well, but also like hammers, saws, stuff like that. Yeah, you know, woodworking tools. Um, so what 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 are you thinking for? What do you think of our boy Vondel here? I was suggesting cobbler as a joke. I don't really think it's a good pick. <laughs> um, well, uh, I do think Smith, jeweler is a cool one though, and Smith too, honestly. Jeweler, to Smith, a, a cook, cook. Mm, I mean, he's a, already got the brewer. What do you guys think maybe he. He would like stew up some mushrooms for his lads back in his military days when they were out on post or whatever. And it's handy to have actually in like a dungeon f- fighting goblins. We, there's, we a whole, there's a whole manga about that. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're turning him into like a whole like culinary and dwarf. I'm kind of feeling it. Yeah, I, I dig it. Sure, cook stools. We we got them down. Um, awesome. They're one of so the cheapest ones, but who cares? Maneuvers. So in case you hadn't really clued in, maneuvers. It's like. It really is very similar to the way sorcerers cast spells in that you have a limited amount of things that you can choose from. You have a resource you expend in order to do it, but these are completely mundane. Um, they're just like maneuvers that a skilled fighter might know how to do. And some of this stuff was stuff that everybody could do in like third edition, like disarm or trip, but things that you weren't necessarily good at. You'd have to yeah. take feats to be good at them. Um, but some of them are more um, are more esoteric and interesting. Yeah, so. and the, the thing I think that kind of sets them apart is that you these superiority dice we have, most of the time you actually roll that d8 and then add it to the attack roll or your effect or whatever, yeah. mm-hmm. um, which it, I think is cool. Okay, so we're going to, I'm going to just go through the ones and we're just going to give a quick summary of them. Yeah, we'll just, just zip there. a little bit because we're dragging right. a little. Commander's Strike. This allows you to forgo an attack and make one of your, let one of your companions attack instead. Yeah. Um, they can add the superiority die to the attack's damage roll. To the damage roll, not the attack roll, yeah, which is yeah. good, because that's potentially eight extra damage, and especially at low levels, that is going to... Yeah, that's... Drop somebody. Um, disarming attack. This basically allows you to... Um, you add your superiority die to the attack's damage roll, and the target must make a strength saving throw. Um, so you do extra damage, and if they fail the save, um, they drop an object you choose. Yep. So you can knock their sword or shield out of their hand, that kind of thing. Knock the torch they're carrying, or like if they're like, you know, maybe if they're like knock making off with an object. Well, if, yeah, if you do that to like a, a magical, like a caster, knocking yeah, their staff or his... wand or whatever to the ground. Potentially like putting a fucking arrow through their hand. Slap, slap the nerd's books out of his hands. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Advanced bullying maneuvers. Uh, distracting strike. Um, that one, I'll use this... Yeah, so you make an attack, add a superiority die to your damage roll, and the next attack roll against a target by an attacker other than you has advantage. It's That's made useful. before the start of your next turn. Especially, um, like, there's so many good uses for that. If you have, like, a barbarian or a champion fighter who has high crit, they'll benefit from advantage a lot more than maybe you necessarily would. Um, so it uh, adds some, like, sort of tacticalness to it. Doing that with a rogue around is cash money. Yeah, extra sneak attack <laughs> for free. 
Uh, let's see. Then evasive footwork. Um, expend a superiority die when you move. Roll the die and add a number roll to your AC until you stop moving. So that's like if you have to run through a bunch of things, a bunch of things that are going to make an opportunity attacks against yeah. you. You can like use that to like you know tell them to get fucked. I would put like a um, gold if you star roll. on that one personally because that is just an awesome, always that good to have move. That way you don't have to like use um, with a withdrawal action to get away from people. Yeah, which means which takes a standard action, but you can move away without co- without provoking attacks of opportunity. I believe you're basically using a maneuver to copy one of the rogues' like class abilities that they get later on. Yeah, but it doesn't. So it is dependent on how you rolled to if you throw that true. superiority die, and it's only a one. You only get one extra AC, which isn't great. But additionally, you could like for example, if Vondel used that and rolled an eight, his armor class would be twenty six for the purpose of this movement. He basically cannot be damaged. Yeah. Um, by attacks. Like, there's just no way it's going to happen. Next up <clears throat> is fainting attack. Use Expend a superiority die and use a bonus action. Turn to faint. Choosing one creature within five feet of you is your target. You have advantage on your next attack roll against that creature. If that attack hits, you also add the superiority die to the attack's damage. Goading <laughs> attack. That one, you can stack that one up. You can faint to prepare for, like, a different one of your maneuvers or, like... Oh, yeah. Something, something else you got if you really want to kick this guy in the balls. That's yeah, a and it's good way to your, your next attack roll against that creature. It doesn't have to be your next turn. That one lasts. Yeah. Which is weird, but whatever. Um, goading attack. Uh, use this period of die to attempt to goad the target into attacking you. Um, this is the provoke. And yeah. it also yeah. gets another star from me. To an attack damage roll, and that target must make a wisdom saving throw. On a failed save, the target has disadvantage on all attack rolls against targets other than you until the end of your next turn. Very good for a tough boy like Vondal, because it allows him some battlefield control. (coughs) Uh, Lunging attack, you expend a superiority die to increase your reach 5 feet, and you add your superiority die to the attack's damage roll when you hit. That's interesting, but... It's not a terrible pick, because Vondal is slow as shit. Well, I mean, by human standards. Not really slow as shit, but he's slower... Um, and yeah. being able to increase your reach is what makes neat. that really good is that you then it lets you hit people behind the person right in front of you. That's why that's oh, fucking yeah. rad. That that's why that one is potentially really good. You can just like reach over the guy in front of you, shoulder to stab his buddy who's standing yeah. behind. Mm-hmm. Swing between his legs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's that's cool. Oh. And it gets the Maneuvering. bonus damage too, doesn't it? Yeah, if you hit, it gets yep, the bonus yep. damage. Yeah. Too. Or you can hit something that's flying above the ground. Oh, yeah. That's true, too. Do a little, little jump strike. I mean, but yeah. something that's flying usually will be high feet above the ground. Yeah, but if it's flying in, like, indoors and just, like, it's being annoying because it's got, yeah. like... That's true. It is definitely the application there. Oh, God, the bats! Get a broom! <laughs> uh, maneuvering attack. I expend a superiority die when you hit to maneuver one of your comrades. Um... You add superiority die, superiority die to your attack's wet damage roll and choose a friendly creature you can see or hear. It can use its reaction to move up to half its speed without provoking opportunity attacks from the target of your attack. So you can allow it to people to get away or allow them yeah. to get up in their face. So this like, one, I will say, in my experience of playing a Battlemaster fighter, maneuvering attack is really good to use if you just want the bonus damage and don't have another ability that you're really interested in because it really just can be like a small boon to literally anybody else in your party. Like If you just want to throw that extra D8 for your damage, you can maybe set one of your friends up for something really good. Um, I know there were times where I used maneuvering attack just for the bonus damage and then nobody wanted to move, so the effect was kind of just wasted. <laughs> but, you know, you just do it for the for the extra hit power. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Menacing, Menacing attack. attack. Expend a superiority die to attempt to frighten the target when you hit. You add the die to the weapons of damage roll, and they must make a wisdom saving throw. On failed save, they are frightened of you until the end of your next turn. What is, how does oh, frighten work? Fuck. <laughs> Let's look that up. This edition. Um, if I think it has to make another saving throw to attack you at all, or if it fails that, it, it's like compelled to move away from you. Okay, I have it here. A frightened creature has disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls while the source of its fear is within line of sight, and it can't willingly move closer to the source of its fear. So it's like an extremely steep debuff, and also they can't come closer to you. Yeah. So that's to whether it tries to attack you or anyone else. It's it's so yes. spooked that it's just crappy until the end of your next turn. But didn't it yeah. say ability checks? Ability checks and attack rolls. Oh, and attack rolls. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, yeah, that's badass. Here, parry. 
when you're hit, you can use your superiority die and your reaction to reduce the damage on the roll equal to your superiority die plus your dex modifier. I will tell you, I got some fucking mileage out of that ability. That was probably what most of my... Because I, I was a dex fighter and I didn't use a shield, so I was very squishy, but it's really nice to be able to shake it up. And like if you get hit for a shitload of damage, you can take a chunk off that yeah. um, as a dex build fighter. Yeah. It's really cool. And just what's, parrying is cool. Like, that's like a cool fucking sword fight maneuver. super cool about this one is there's another ability that uses it too, but it's one of the only maneuvers that lets you use this as a reaction. So... Right. You can yeah. still be on your turn whacking people with your other maneuvers and then use this one kind of like a shield spell to be like, oh, you know what? Yeah. Uh, fuck you. That hurt too much. Let's let's yeah. let's <laughs> let's numb that one a little bit. It's it's a good one. Yeah, next uh, we got precision attack here, which is um, doesn't add extra damage. But if you expend a superiority die uh, once you make an attack, you can use it before or after making an attack roll. Um, to add it to your roll, mm-hmm. yeah. your actual d- attack roll. So if it you sounds miss, boring, no, it's so good. You really, just got to hit. Yeah, the thing is, the fact that you can decide after you've missed to add it. Like if you're close or you think you're close, that I think that is pretty huge. That's really good. Um, yeah, that's another one that gets. Yeah. That's I think the third star, maybe fourth. That uh-huh. I you know well okay, then a star for Perry would make this one fourth, <laughs> like because it's just so fucking like that's clutch. Um, because the thing about all these other ones is they don't do anything if you miss, like, but yeah, this and you one, still lose your die. Yeah. This is for like, oh God, that guy's got a lot of AC. Like, how am I gonna, we gotta still gotta whittle him down somehow. Um, for guys that are really heavily armored and just hard to whack or very jumpy yeah. and like, just get around too much. This is clutch for it's, it, I think it's the only one that lets you increase all the others are to damage this one. Is yeah. the is the one I believe that will uh, let you throw that superiority die at your two hit roll. So uh, yeah. it's a it's a I don't know. I consider it kind of an essential one. It's it's really really good. This yeah. next one is sounds very dramatic. Pushing attack. You add your superiority die to an attack damage roll, and if the target is large or smaller, it must make a strength saving throw. On a failed save, you can push it up to 15 feet away from you. That's, that's really far. You yeah, can send people that's farther flying. than the champion gets in jump distance. Like three <laughs> times as far. Loser. <laughs> and large or smaller. So, like, you can use it on big boys. You could, like, kick a troll across the room if you well, felt this like is... it. So that's just, like... Yeah, after Ooh. you've slapped the nerd's books out of his hand, you shove him into his locker so he can't pick him back up <laughs> on his next turn. <laughs> Kick him off a fucking cliff? Like, that's just cool. I, mm-hmm. I think that the visual, like, 15 feet, that's far. See how yeah. long 15 feet is? You are throwing this guy. That's taken, like, that's like the anime punch that sends you sliding back on your heels yeah, kind of thing. Huge! It's it's really cool. You just reminded me of the old yeah. Fallout games where people fall down on the ground after <laughs> and being they just kicked slide. and then slide across the ground. <laughs> and like I, so I played, slowly too. They just like I played, I played they, so many unarmed fighters in those games, and like you just punch somebody so hard, like yeah. they fall down and just slide across the room. They hit a wall, and then the pool of blood comes yeah. out from under them. Either they'll stand <laughs> up, or you'll see that red circle. Yeah, just it's like oh, I'm gonna have to go really pick that up run. later. Yeah. Yeah, that was oh, one of the things so like funny. when you were doing the boxing in in uh, New Reno, and uh, yeah. <laughs> like hitting a guy so hard he slid out of the ring. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so sick. God, I haven't thought about those games in a long. Or like time. where you, could, I played one character who couldn't crit at all, so he couldn't knock people out, so he just beat the boxers to death. <laughs> like, <laughs> and then you win. Yeah, I always thought what you with. Yeah, I remember constantly like getting to that part and punching someone so hard their like side exploded, and you're just like, oh, <laughs> oh yeah, oops. That's my favorite death animation. It's just like a shot to the eyeball makes a guy's makes a guy's oblique blow out, and it's just yeah. like, <laughs> Man, that, that's a satisfying. Death animation. You're literally I love the rapid fire one where they just like pop, 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 yeah. and then fall down. It like, just cuts off everything from like their hip up to their shoulder. Yeah, yeah the really one visceral punch sound man moments too. where you just kick someone into like a cloud of gore were like <laughs> <laughs> really good. Splat. So if you had the bloody mess prick, you'd see that a lot more. Mm-hmm. Um, shit, anyway. we're so close. We are so yeah, close, you yeah, guys. We're, we're on here. rally. <laughs> rally. <laughs> on your turn, if you use a bonus action, expend one superiority die to boost, bolster the resolve of one of your companions. They gain temporary hit points equal to your superiority, superiority die roll plus your charisma modifier. That's a bit of an oddball. It's a real weird um, one. It works at range. 
Um, I feel like it's one of those things that like there are a lot of other classes that can certainly do that better. But if you're trying to play like a battlefield control commander kind of fighter, I feel like it's really thematically relevant to that. And it can it helps, you know, that can be 10 extra hit points, especially at low levels. That can be the difference between life and death for your wizard who had like the bugbear run up to him and smack him with a maul. You know what I mean? Well, what's silly about this? It's well, these are kind of like along with maneuvering attack. I feel like these are kind of things that were inherited from Warlord. But yes. if you think about that, that's four uses of that at level three. Like, yeah, that's per actually, short yeah. rest, that makes you like a jacked healer for like that low level. Like that you're Temporary. throwing out. If, you, if you've actually built towards this and have that decent charisma modifier, being able to throw per... Like 10 hit, hit points worth of temporary hit points at right, people, uh, yeah. Four times it's nice. at level three, like you're... At, you're already you're outpacing the paladin for healing with just one maneuver choice. Granted, yeah. it's only temporary, so it's like they go away at the true, end of combat; true, they can't yeah. really stop yeah. somebody from dying. But mm-hmm. they'll they'll base they they're basically yeah. Yeah. yeah, it'll buoy them to their next short rest. And like, I feel like it, it's kind of it. It seems underwhelming and kind of like a weird pick, but if you think about the numbers behind that, that's kind of broken. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's it's good, but I think the fact that it's temporary stops it from being broken. Right. Yeah. And I, I think it's really good, but mm-hmm. I wouldn't say it's busted. And then it runs off your charisma modifier, which, like, most fighters are probably mm-hmm. going to dump. Um, yeah, you, you got to stack for that. thinking about it too hard. Yeah, like, it's why, I, yeah. like, I wouldn't... If you're really, playing, like, like, a swashbuckling type, you might have a better use for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They yeah. Probably Ooh, speaking of part. swashbuckling, the next ability is probably my favorite one. Repost. Repost? Repost. Repost. Repost, repost, whatever. Repost. Tomato, tomato. It's the counter attack. When they miss, That's somebody good. misses you. You can use your reaction and expend one of the superiority die to make a melee weapon attack against that creature. And if you hit, you add the superiority die to weapons damage roll, the attack's damage roll. Sweeping I attack. Got some good mileage out of repost. I yeah. do love it. But yeah, for it's brevity's the- sake, let's move on. <laughs> Sweeping attack. Cleave by any other name. Uh, yes. When you hit a creature with a melee weapon attack, expend the superiority die to attack, attempt to damage another creature within this with the same attack. They have to be within five feet of the original target within your reach. Um, if the original attack roll would hit the second target, it takes damage equal to the number you roll on your superiority die, which is not as good as um, which is not as good as like hitting them with your main weapon damage usually. But hey, it's something. It's something, yeah. and you're double dipping on the superiority die. Now you've dealt damage to the original creature with that die roll and that extra superiority damage. Oh. Again, yeah, I don't think you do. Extra, I don't think you do extra damage because it's when you hit a creature with the melee weapon attack, you expend it. So you make the it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't actually oh, do extra damage. No, you're though. right. It doesn't deal that no. superiority damage to the first creature. I've interpreted that wrong. I but don't at the same like time, this one now. One, but at the same time, you don't waste it. It's one that ha- that you can choose to trigger true, after you true. hit. Something. True. Even if you miss that. I would like that a lot more if you could also, if it didn't have to be within your reach, like that uh, lunging attack. If you could smack someone the and then guy behind. hit the guy behind him somehow for a Stab little bit right of damage, through. it'd be kind of neat. But yeah. yeah, exactly. Like a penetrating strike. But Yeah. At last, but probably not least, uh, <laughs> trip attack. Superiority die of hit to knock a target down. Yeah. You Strength save where they go prone. prone. But if it's large or smaller, it makes a strength saving throw, and it's just, like you said, if it goes it goes down, if they fail the save. So, which one of these? So we get three of these. So for Vondel, what do you think? Oh, boy, battle hammer. Um. So I think I know Dan had some. He he was dropping some gold stars on ones that he I was. Thought were yeah, really I was hinting good. that um, things like which goading ones, attack, a uh, face. My my favorites from this list are. Uh, um, sorry, evasive footwork, goading attack. Uh, I like parry a lot, and um, lunging attack. I think was the other one that I said. Or no, no, I'm sorry. Goading Pre- attack? Precision attack is the one that lets right. you choose. Yeah. yeah. I think goading attack is a really good pick, just because Vondel is built like a brick shit house. Yes, He's got yeah. really high armor class for his level at 18, which is stacked, and he yeah. has like a decent amount of hip too. Um, and just gives him battlefield control. So I think we can probably put that one down. That's yeah, goading attack is I think is that's a good one. Evasive um, footwork and parry he might not need because he has so much AC anyway. Yeah. Like anything that sort of improves his defenses even further might just be kind of doubling down on something yeah. he's already good at. One thing I will say is that 
Riposte might be a really good pick for him because oh, his armor right. class yeah, is so high and it only armor. procs when they miss. So, like, you know, he's not really a swashbuckler. He's a fucking chunky It's like somebody's sword bounces off his chest and he just smacks him for the audacity yeah. of mm. trying to hit him. Yeah. And you get the you get the superiority to add to your damage. So I think Riposte, even though it doesn't really seem thematically what, like, a dwarven soldier might have, I think it's really good for him. No, he's in yeah. there close. He's fighting with sword and hammer, or not sword, shield and hammer. He's blocking hits and just cracking backs. Yep. Yeah, knows yeah. how to capitalize on. You're the right. You get a lot of mileage out of that one. Yeah, for sure. So we got one more. Um, uh, so we what we got? We decided on what precision and I think precision have, attack is another one that's precision, really good at helping him be aggressive. Um, what was yeah, our charisma pers- bonus? Our charisma bonus is we're charisma ten, so our bonus oh, is nothing. Zero. Nah, so no rally. Yeah. No rally. Yeah, we're not getting shit from that. So um, precision, repost, and goading. Yeah. I yeah. think that's a pretty that's a pretty solid kit for him. And as you level up in Battle Master, you get addition you get additional feats that you can yeah, access. So we can broaden this list later. Yeah, let's talk about the rest of the Battle Master features yes. while we're here. Seventh level ability is very cool. I like this is kind of like the ranger's favorite enemy almost in a way. You spend at least one minute observing or interacting with another creature outside of combat. The DM has to tell you if the creature is your equal superior or inferior in regard to two of the following characteristics of your choice. Strength, dexterity, constitution score, uh, one of those. Armor class, current hit points, total class levels, if any, or fighter class levels, if any. So if you like, you know, like or you're observing a monster from the distance, you can your DM, the DM has to tell you like what its AC is and how many hit points it has, so you have an idea of like how to fight this thing. Not the exact number, just if it's higher than if yours, better, equal yeah, to right, yours, right. or worse than yours. That's true. That's I, I, I misinterpreted that wrong. But a really good ability. Than- in certain modules i played um if you're sort of fighting the people of, yeah the fifth edition of castle ravenloft i think it's called curse of strahd i um because you like interact with the a lot of the main villains in that module for, like many times so it's really useful Precisely. um yeah yeah to be able to get information like that especially current hit points um yeah it's like if i have to fight fist fight this guy yeah am i going to be a- cool yeah yeah and then uh, improved combat superiority at 10th level. Um, they turn the D- your superiority die, become D10s, and at 18th level they become D12s. And uh, then Finally, a use for D12s. <laughs> yeah, so relentless. Starting at 15th level, when you roll initiative and have no superiority die remaining, you gain one superiority die. So it's you know, it's basically I keep going regardless. Like if fight yes. to fight to fight, I have a little. He always has a little bit left in the tank. Yeah. Yes. I think Battlemaster is so cool. I think it is easily my favorite subclass. Of, I love the kit of stuff you get. Um, and it's fun to use. Like, I've used it in a couple campaigns, and it's just badass. So our yeah. boy Vondel here, he's stacked. Yeah, and at 7, right, so, oh, I don't know if we touched on it, but it's yeah. level 7, 10, and 15, um, you get new maneuvers. Yeah, and you can swap um, out one of your... Uh, two of them other yeah, ones too, at each of those. So you you've got... Um, nine i believe that'll add up to nine maneuvers by the time you're level 15 which is like damn near all of them um you can really pick all the ones that are any good that you i remember not wanting like i when i did i only had like a few yeah i only had a few that i really used and there was a point where it's like new maneuvers i'm just like oh like i guess i'll take fucking you get two new ones yeah and then you can trade out (laughs) one of the ones you're like i guess i don't need that as much yeah, that's cool too. So you can kind of try it, and then if you're not not digging the menacing attack, you can swap it out for repost or whatever. Mm-hmm. So it's cool. And now Vondel is third level. Um, he, he's a strong boy. He's yep. um, he's uh, got some shit. Yeah, and that's only a... level three. Like you can get there like very quickly. So like you can see how like Doug was has been saying like the game really starts to open up based on like the choices that you've made and you sort of get to decide, you know, come into your own as your character. Mm -hmm. Um, Even though this, we, we, we kind of made this choice seem very obvious. Uh, Maybe it really is for fighter. I'm trying I was going to try to say like, you know, maybe you'll have some different picks, but like, I feel like if you're partied with like a, you know, if you just have party with like a, like a rogue and a, ranger or something it might be really nice to have that diversity of magical abilities if you take a eldritch knight you know you get some proper spells in the party you know what i mean mm-hmm. it's like your individual mileage may marry i've played with eldritch knights 
um and it's it's cool you know it's it's neat to have that flexibility Mm -hmm. um you can i think run into some problems if you do have like a wizard and a fighter in your party you're kind of at this weird weird crossroads where like other than like the few eldritch knight abilities like being able to summon your sword in your hand you like don't fight quite as well as a battle master would but you also don't cast as well as the wizard can um yeah, it's more about filling what what about which roles need filling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean like Eldritch Knight is just like it's become like an archetype and I think it's a pretty cool one. Um yeah, it's definitely flavorful. Like that would it would be mm. fun to play and you know the you yeah. know there's and there's the role play really potential cool. and stuff. And yeah, you can just teleport behind your enemies and <laughs> <laughs> say your badass one liner before you cut them in half with your katana. Yeah. You know how it goes. So yeah, that's uh we got Vondel Battlehammer here. Level three Dwarven fighter, and uh, I think that's where we'll call it for tonight. Probably, yeah, yeah, good. So, yeah, uh, we worked out pretty well. I think uh, maybe we'll come back to Vondel in the future and see how he's uh, <laughs> he develops along his career. Maybe we'll bring him epic. We're going full twenty, boys. Oh, oh my god! god. Ongoing <laughs> that'll, be, that'll be that'll be our. We don't have any other. We, that'll be our. We don't, don't give that away. Don't let deck. them know that that's why Vondel <laughs> keeps appearing. Shut up. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna edit uh, yes. this out. D D week. <laughs> hey, uh, Vondel episode again, guys. <laughs> yeah. oh, All right. Stupid. Well, thanks for listening, everybody, oh, and yes, uh, thank you. we'll see you next time. <laughs>